thanks, Commissioner Burton and uh, other commissioners. Happy to be here today. Uh, my name is Dan Huttenmacher, and I am the Vice Provost and Dean of Cornell Tech, which makes me the Chief Academic Officer for this new venture here in New York City. So I wanted to uh, speak a little bit to the academic program side of this vision uh, for a new campus on Roosevelt Island. And really, our goal here is to do nothing short of fundamentally new approaches to graduate education and research in technology fields in order to facilitate innovation in this new age. If you look at the way that technical and engineering schools have developed over the last century and a half, they largely responded to an industrial age, to a manufacturing age, and we are now on the cusp of an information age. We're really coming back and rethinking a lot of the fundamentals about graduate education and research. And in particular, our vision is to bring together three cultures that are generally fairly disparate from one another. One is the culture of academic excellence, and particularly technical depth uh, in the academy. One is the culture of commercial success, and one is the culture of societal good. So we're really looking at a campus where commercial activities and interact with nonprofits is a fundamental piece of what happens on the campus in addition to the traditional kind of academic <clears throat> So the way I like to think about this is having an on-campus focus. In many ways, we're reversing some of the norms, right? Universities tend to reach out to the world. We send our students elsewhere. We send our faculty off to do consulting. Uh, many of us, including Cornell, open campuses overseas. What we're doing here is building a campus in New York City, uh, in what we view as the heart of New York City between Manhattan and Queens. I know it's part of the borough of Manhattan officially, but, but sitting there in the East River. Um, it, it's a campus that will bring uh, academic partners to the campus, so the Technion is our initial foreign academic partner, will bring industry partners, and will bring partners from the nonprofit sector. So that brings us to this question of who's on the campus and what are their roles, which I think is a, is a natural question for this new kind of campus. So at Cornell, we're the responsible entity, both legally in the lease agreement with the city of New York, and in terms of operations uh, of the overall campus and investment in the physical campus development. The Technion Cornell Innovation Institute is a key portion of the campus, a key aspect of the campus. And that Innovation Institute is a 50-50 partnership between Cornell University and the Technion that we believe is actually unique to bringing a US and a foreign university together and partnering uh, in creating an academic institute here in the United States. Uh, there are certainly partnerships between US and foreign universities for overseas campuses, but doing this here in the US, we believe this is a first. <coughs> Um, and that institute, in addition to its uh, research and education missions, uh, will also have a technology commercialization mission just like the rest of the campus. And a big thing that will distinguish that institute is that it will award dual degrees, where students in those programs will receive a simultaneous Cornell and Technion degree, which means the academics from two different institutions are working together in creating those degrees. So with that, I wanted to say that we're really happy to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to questions. Well, let's see. Uh, I always say thrilling for the city of New York. Great, great excitement. Um, nationwide, probably globally. Absolutely. So, um, welcome, you. And let me see if there are any questions from the commissioners. That's Angela Bataglia. I'm in the Good morning. I'm sure you've read through the, uh, the recommendations of both the community board and the borough president. Uh, I believe one of those recommendations on the part of the community board was that campus facilities be open to residents of the island. And I believe one of the recommendations of the borough president was that open space be not only available, but open until 10 o'clock at night. Can you address those two concerns? Sure. Um, so let me just preface this answer uh, with something that will apply to all of my answers, which is I'm the chief academic officer of the institution. I did hear that. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you could probably you tell by the who comes uh, after that. So now it's out there. And so, and so I, I will, uh, I, I, I will you address. You can defer to someone else. No, I, I, will, I will address uh, it to the best of my knowledge, mm -hmm. but uh, there are definitely people on our team who are much more knowledgeable about the uh, Euler process so far and the discussions with the community. Uh, and, and a step so far in, in the process. Um, but one thing I, I did want to uh, answer is the, the idea of an open, uh, of open spaces on campus. It's very important to us that this be an open campus. Uh, it's part of our fundamental design goals. It's part of our, uh, what we're doing in, in building the 
this campus. I like to think about this as allowing you to experience from one side of the river to the other, which is actually uh, in many parts of Roosevelt Island not such, a, such an easy experience to have. Uh, and so we're really looking at this. This is not a walled campus. This is not a gated campus. Uh, the outside, the external spaces will be accessible. Um, you know, obviously there may be security concerns about, you know, times of day where somebody might come and ask people to please not be there, but it's, it's an open campus. And by the way, the reason I asked the question to you is because you made a point of saying that this is not traditional, that you're not reaching out, that you're hoping that they will yep. reach in. So. Absolutely, yep. And so at that, at that level, absolutely, the details of, of you know, where we are and things, so that someone else is better positioned. Right. Michelle Dallas. Thank you for being here. Uh, I appreciate your framing of the three cultures coming together. And I, I think I'd actually kind of ask you to continue in highlighting the other two points and the cultures and the commercial um, and the societal good, because you know, it seems, at least from the first part, there's been quite a bit of thinking specifically about the academic piece. And I'm wondering um, where the steps are on the other two pieces and what opportunities will be moving forward to try to um, for the community at large, not just those that I'm certainly um, broader community kind of influence that. And then the other piece, um, if you could speak to any um, early plans that you all have to connect to um, some of the STEM initiatives that exist um, in the city, that would be great. Sure, sure. Um, so just to speak a little bit to both the commercial and societal good sides, one of the things that we are aiming for in this campus is to make this the easiest place in the world to take ideas that are academic ideas and translate them into ideas that are having an impact in the world. And in our view, there are two ways to do that that are not mutually exclusive, but they tend to fall into the sort of commercial, the commercially viable bucket and the nonprofit bucket. Uh, although there are interesting things happening now in many areas trying to bring those together in new ways. And so I, I don't want to sound like I'm excluding that possibility. <coughs> so um, for us, that means uh, a campus development that uh, will bring people from industry and from nonprofits here in the city of New York to the campus on a regular basis in at least two different ways. One way is directly engaged with the academic programs, and the other is with what we're calling the sort of corporate co-location space on the campus. So let me talk to each of those briefly. So um, in terms of the academic program, we will have every student project on the campus will have a mentor from what we're saying industry, but we really include nonprofits and community organizations in industry here. Somebody who brings the outside view about how you can use technology to make a difference in the world. And so those people will be engaged actively on the campus and the academic programs, and that's already starting with our beta class uh, that, that just commenced uh, last month, now we're in February, <laughs> I was gonna say this month, uh, and at the end of January, uh, where we already have people from local companies in the city, from local nonprofit organizations in the city, uh, coming to the campus, working with the <coughs> and that's, that's in uh, Google's building where they've given us space for the next five years. Um, and then with respect to the corporate co-location piece, a very important <coughs> part of the vision for this campus is to not only have companies uh, and other organizations able to spend time in the academic spaces, but also to allow them to have their sort of advanced development kinds of activities, things that benefit from a very close Day, daily tie to the activities that are going on on the campus, but that are separate a little bit from the specific academic objectives. And that's part of this getting things out into the world. Right now there's this huge chasm between what happens in academia and then the need often to travel to very remote places, often on another coast, for example, uh, in order to, to try to get ideas into uh, the commercial world. And so we're both excited about the density of New York City as a place to work more closely with companies and nonprofits, but we feel it's also important to have something right on the campus, and that, that's the corporate publication facility. Uh, Mr. Provost, uh, I think uh, hearing from my colleagues and indeed uh, in the opinions of certainly the community board and the borough president thus far, uh, there is a, uh, an embrace of the mission of Cornell NYC Tech. I think the issue, uh, at this particular point is how you get there and the uh, level and quality of, of interaction uh, that you have with the community that's impacted by this building process. So, so could you speak to this whole function of a community liaison and the kinds of uh, communicative uh, 
programming that you're going to have with uh, the, the community of Roosevelt Island? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the same answer I gave before, which is this is a good question for somebody else on our team to pick up more on the details about in terms of specifics around what, a, what community interactions might look like in the future. But I want to set the tone of the type of interactions that we have been having and plan to continue having, in, in, in my view, as an academic uh, leader of the campus. So uh, I think it's very important to us that we engage with the community broadly, which means the technology community in New York City, it means the residents of Roosevelt Island, and it means the city more broadly outside of both tech and, and just the Roosevelt Island community. But I would list those as three different types of communities that we think are very important to engage with. And we started way back in the proposal process, which is what, almost about two years ago now, where that first got kicked off, um, engaging a lot with the technology community and technology leaders in New York and with the Roosevelt Island community. So this is something that's not new to a Euler process or new to planning the physical campus. It's something that's been inherent to our whole approach to designing what we want to do here in New York City. So we really view ourselves as building something that is, is designed to be responsive to New York and that really takes advantage of the fact that we're in New York City, which means being a part of New York, not just dumping something down in the middle that doesn't interact closely with the rest of the city. So from the academic view, those are very important to us, and we believe that our actions already speak at least as loud as our goals, and that, that you know, we're actively engaging with various communities in New York City. Any other questions for the provost? Do we really appreciate you being here. I'm very excited to have you part of this. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, the next speaker is Patrick Dowd.